Do you love the look of freehand watercolouring but need a little bit of a helping hand? So do I and in today's video I'm going to be using a stencil to give me the look I need but without having to be a fantastic watercolouring artist in today's stylish card making techniques with Jenny. Hey crafters, welcome back to another video, it's Jenny here. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to fake freehand watercolouring. So we are gonna be using a stencil, but it's also got some freehand in it. Just need a little bit of a helping hand, don't we, sometimes? The medium I'm using today is these brush and fine tip pens. This is the Hawaiian Shores set, and they've got some good colors, blues, purples, reds, and lots of greens. Perfect for doing leaves, which is what we're gonna be doing on our card today. The brush tip is not um, like a real brush, it's sort of um, firm and great for using with stencils. And then the other tip, the fine tip, fits in those detailed areas that you often find on stencils that are really tough to get to with like blenders, even detailed blenders. So I find that the, these pens are absolutely fantastic for this technique. My cardstock is Bristol Smooth. It takes water well, and I wanted it because it's bright white. I also highly recommend the watercolor paper from Alta New. Uh, you can get it in loose sets, already cut to A2 size, which is perfect, but I'd run out, so I had to grab my Bristol Smooth. It works pretty much just as well. The stencil I'm using is the foliage stencil. It is actually a layering stencil. It has some open areas, which are great for the freehand watercoloring technique I'm gonna show you, and also some detail that's on the other side of the stencil, which we'll use in a bit. I'm adhering it down with some satin masking tape onto my craft mat. And then I'm just outlining each leaf with the brush tip end of a firefly this is from the Hawaiian Shores set. So you can see I'm just going around the inside of the leaf. And then what I'm doing is I have a damp paintbrush, not too much water. You have to be careful because you don't want the water to seep under the stencil. And I'm just pulling out that color so that it blends that outline in and gives a very faint kind of look of green, fading it out towards the center. And uh, you will see that I am going to just go and speed that up all the way around this stencil. I'm taking my time and doing the same technique on every single leaf. I did accidentally color a bit of a branch there, so you can ignore that. Uh, and, uh, and this is gonna be our first color layer. So I'm choosing a lighter color from the pen set. For the branches, I am using Honey Drizzle, which is a dark yellow color, and I'm using the brush tip end again, but I'm coloring in the entire branch. I'm not take, taking much care because I'm gonna pull it out again with that damp paintbrush, and that gives it a little bit of a watercolor look, uh, but I can keep that intensity of the color. And that's it for the stenciling. So it's not too much cheating, it just gives us a really good basic idea of where the image is and we're going to embellish this now. This, the rest of this is all you, it's all freehand and uh, you can make of it whatever you like. So I'm just going to remove the satin masking tape, I don't want to waste it so I'm going to use it to re-adhere it back down onto my craft mat. And then I'm going to take my next colour of green, this is just green, and I'm going to layer up my colours here. So I'm freehanding it now. We're going to almost act as if we're colouring in a stamped image. And I'm going to add some flicks in on every leaf, just from the base up about halfway. And then again with my damp paintbrush, same one that I used before, pull that colour out, maybe pull it up and around, uh, however I'm feeling, or maybe depending on how good you are with light sources, you could just do it on one side. I'm not being too scientific here. And the reason I'm doing every leaf in turn, rather than adding all my pen first and then pulling it out with the pen, with the water brush, is the ink in the pen, whilst it's water soluble, does have a tendency to dry and I want that blended look rather than showing any pen marks. So I find the best way to do that is to do each leaf in turn. I've got a much more play time with the ink color on the cardstock. Uh, if I leave it a bit too long, it makes it a little bit harder to pull out. Not impossible, just I have to scrub it a little bit more. And with Bristol cardstock particularly, you can get pilling where that's where the 
paper sort of bobbles a little bit. Watercolour cardstock, like cold pressed cardstock, it doesn't do it as easily. You'll also see where I have stems, I'm trying to pull the leaf stem down into the branch and then that way I'm joining them all up together into one sort of uh, solid branch and that's a little bit of extra freehand that I'm doing there. You see on that one I just pulled that base of that leaf just with my damp brush down and blended it into the branch here and there. I'm now going to come in with a third green, this is evergreen, and just add the ever so slight amount of that colour down in the base of the leaf. It's really dark coloured, it's going to add that pop of contrast that gives that depth and shadow. You'll see I'm just adding a little tiny bit, coming back in with my brush, a damp brush, and just pulling it down. That's literally all I'm doing. Nothing fancy, I am not a freehand watercolour artist at all. I've tried it once, it was terrible. Uh, and I really enjoyed this technique. I was shocked at how well it worked. And I can't wait to try it with tons of the other stencils that I have in my stash. So you don't have to use the foliage stencil, I like leaves, but you could try it with any of the stencils you have. You know, the detailed ones, the open area ones, this technique works for all of them. You'll see it here. And I'm just speeding this up again. You'll see I'm adding that dark colour at the bottom of every single leaf, doing it exactly the same way for all of the leaves, and then just pulling it down into the branch and a little bit around that leaf. Now, I'm going back to my stencil here. I, I lied a little bit. I said that we were done with the stenciling. It wasn't quite true because I forgot this was a two layer stencil, so forgive me. But this has some detail and it's perfect for those fine tip ends of these pens. So I've come back with my Firefly, which was that lightest colour, lined up my stencil and I'm just adding those three lines in. Sort of, I went back and forth a couple of times. Uh, you probably don't need to, I just wanted to intensify that colour a little bit without going down into the just green or the evergreen. And I'm just drawing those uh, lines onto the leaves. And then when I lift up my stencil, you can leave it at that, but I also wanted to come in, give it a bit more of that watercolour look again. So what I did is once I've drawn those lines in, I'm coming in with a damp brush, clean, clear water, adding a couple of um, it swipes, for want of a better word, over the top of that leaf, wiping it off on my paper towel off camera, a bit more clean, clear water, damp. It's just damp, it's not wet. And then just all it does is add a little touch of blending to those lines, gives it a little bit more of a softer look. Now we're going to intensify the artsiness. I've come in with all of the pens I've used from the set, scribbled a bit of all of them onto my craft mat. And now I have a wetter brush here. So it's, it's the same size brush that I was using the two. I'm just going to add a bunch of water into that scribbled marker and then splatter. I'm using it on all of the colors. And then I did come in with a smaller detailed brush. I think this might be a one just to add some more splatters and you'll see you get a finer splatter. So it just gives it a little bit more uh, of, a, of a look that, I don't know, artsy look. <laughs> I love splatters, love them. Once it's dried, I can add my sentiment. I am keeping this as a one layer card. So I'm using this Say It With Love sentiment stamp set. It's got some great sentiments, usually use them on the inside of cards, but I thought seeing as this was very clean and simple um, and a really soft looking card, I thought that that more wordy a sentiment, particularly the scripty font, would go really well. Uh, I'm inking it up with obsidian pigment ink, which is perfect for fine sentiments like this one. I'm just going to stamp it over the top. I do stamp it twice to get an intense black colour. And then because this is watercolour, even though it didn't really warp too much, I'm using my double-sided adhesive sheets. I've trimmed it down to just a little bit smaller than the A2 card, and I'm going to apply it directly over the back of my card panel. To line it up onto my card base, I'm going to grab my Ulta New scoring board. I've got a top folding note card here already. I'm going to push it up into that top left hand corner and then push in the panel, lining it up perfectly. This is my new favourite trick and it works so well with this Ulta New scoring board because it's so deep compared to other scoreboards I've used. To finish it off, satin gold sequins of course, and look how pretty. It just makes it, it just makes it. It's like the ribbon on a gift. And that finishes 
my card. I hope this inspired you to grab for your stencils and then see if you can give yourself a helping hand getting that freehand watercolour look. It's only a little bit faked. It's only a little bit faked. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Alter News channel if you don't already. Have a great day. Bye. Hello crafters, Jen here. For more tips, techniques, tutorials, and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, subscribe to Alta News YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching.